Hello, everyone, and welcome to what was formerly known as the official Vorel Fan Club. This is the EDH Jank Center, your source for everything janky and everything commander. I am your host, Jordan, or Prairies. I answer to either. Today, we are starting a new series called Finding Homes for Janky Cards. They may not be efficient, they may not be good, but we're taking bad cards and we're putting them in decks because even bad cards deserve a home too. Maybe it's just because I like being unique or have this weird aversion to like commander staples, but I always, always, always prefer the more unique, janky cards that somehow synergize with the commander as opposed to just putting another Reclamation Sage or Cyclonic Rift into the deck. And listen, they print them, so we're gonna use them, kiddos. But before we get started, make sure you check out last week's video, which is a Boros Goad Equipment Tribal Deck Tech. I really, really love this, and I'm so excited to add it to my personal collection. And I'll actually be talking about another Forced Combat Commander in this list. Your boy just loves Forced Combat, what can I say? And after checking that out, feel free to leave a comment about what deck tech you think I should do next. Or if you have a janky card that you've always wanted to fit in a deck but could never do it, submit it in the comments, and I might just use it in the next video video. All right, let's go. The first card we are finding a home for is Elspeth, Undaunted Hero. Two white, 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 legendary planeswalker from Theros Beyond Death. Its abilities read as such. Plus two, put a plus one, plus one counter on each of up to two target creatures. Minus two, search your library and or graveyard for a card named Sunlit Hoplite and put it onto the battlefield. If you search your library this way, shuffle it. Minus eight, until end of turn, creatures you control gain flying and get plus X, plus X, where X is your devotion to white. So the minus two. The minus two is not, it's, it's, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's very specific. It's very specific. We're not going to be negative. So it is very specific. And today we're going to be focusing on the first and third loyalty ability of Elspeth Undaunted Hero. So immediately upon reading the first ability, I thought, oh my God, I already am building a deck list for this. This would be perfect in it. It is Kroos Defense Contractor. Kroos costs one Bant or Brokers, which is one green, one white, one blue. It's a legendary creature, Cat Advisor from New Capenna Commander. At the beginning of your upkeep, put a shield counter on target creature and opponent controls. Whenever you put one or more counters on a creature you don't control, tap that creature and goad it. It gains trample until your next turn. A little overview of Kroos's keywords. So goad, if you're unfamiliar, means if you go to creature, that creature has to attack until your next turn and it has to attack someone other than you if able. And as for shield counters, they are a counter that prevent damage or destruction of the permanent that they are placed on. So if a creature has a shield counter, the next time it would be destroyed or dealt damage enough to destroy it, you remove the shield counter instead and your creature remains alive. So basically with Kroos, you are giving people a bunch of counters, giving a bunch of counters out to creatures of your opponents, having those creatures then attack your opponents, whittle their life totals down until you can finally finish the job. Hopefully. So where does Elspeth fit in? Well, I'll tell you. First of all, she's a flavor win because Elspeth is a character in New Capenna. So with Elspeth out on the field, we put a plus one plus one counter using her plus two ability on up to two target creatures, which means we are goading with Kroos out at least three creatures on our turn until our next turn. Combine that with some other cards and you've got an engine, boys. The thing with Planeswalkers is that they usually have a bit of trouble staying around, but she's an unassuming Planeswalker because people are, you know, she's janky. That's why she's in the list. But more than just being unassuming, she is literally in a Kroos deck goading creatures, which means they will not be attacking you or Planeswalkers you control more than likely. So she should be staying around at least for a couple turns. And honestly, the minus eight ability is a great win con for a goad deck. A lot of times in Force Combat decks, you struggle when you're one-on-one -on -one with someone because you've been goading everyone and they probably have multiple big threats that you just might not be able to handle. However, what if you could give all your stuff plus X plus X equals with their devotion to white and flying? Well, you can with Elspeth and her ultimate ability. Now I get it, in a three color deck, that can be hard to get all your devotion to white to really swing in for a lot of damage, but if it's one on one, their life total's probably already low, and with just Elspeth and Kroos, that's plus four, plus four and flying. And more often than not, that is gonna be plenty. Now I know what you might be thinking, Jordan, why wouldn't you just use a Johnny Adversary of Tyrants, which literally costs one less and does basically the same thing but better? This is where the misfits go, okay? We are a merry band of ragtag misfits who are just trying to find a home, okay? If you wanted a Johnny, go to the official Johnny fan club. 
Nah, but for real though, Elspeth only costs 36 cents as opposed to a Johnny's three, nearly four dollars. So let's move on, shall we? Coming up next, we have Maro, two green and green. It's a summon nature spirit, which means it's a creature and a nature spirit. It's originally printed in Mirage and its text reads, Maro has power and toughness, each equal to the number of cards in your hand. So this guy's just a cute, adorable little beefy boy. And I have found the perfect home for him in Joel Rael Mwanvoli Recluse. Joel Rael has big time mommy energy she's a one green legendary creature human druid from corset 21 she says whenever you draw your second card each turn create a 2-2 green cat creature token pay four green green until end of turn creatures you control have base power and toughness xx where x is the number of cards in your hand She's a 1-2. So this one's pretty straightforward, folks. You're going to be drawing a bunch of cards in Jor-El, so you want big beaters that can do big beater things, and Maro is one of those things. If you have 12 cards in hand, Maro becomes a 12-12. And with all the stuff that's in green, you can easily give Maro Trample. You can even use, like, Colossification on it if you want. Just make it disgusting um, and just have some fun with it. All right, next up on the docket is Erratic Cyclops. Three and a red creature, Cyclops Shaman from Guilds of Ravnica. It has Trample. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, Erratic Cyclops gets plus X plus zero until end of turn, where X is that spell's mana cost, converted mana cost. It's a zero eight. So I first thought here was some sort of spell slinging deck, and then I realized that there's a commander that might be able to do this, but make him really, really big, because that trample ability is definitely something you want to be swinging at people with. So I thought about Joyra of the Gitu. She is one and is it, which is red and the blue. Legendary creature, human wizard from Future Sight. Pay two, exile a non-land card from your hand. Put four times counters on the exiled card if it doesn't have suspend it gains suspend which means at the beginning of your upkeep you remove a time counter from that card when the last is removed cast it without paying its mana cost if it's a creature it has haste and she's a 2-2 so with suspend you're always going to be trying to cheat out gigantic cards so instead of doing big creatures like eldrazi's or dragons i thought why not just cast big time extra turn spells so cards like time stretch obliterate treasure cruise expropriate those are all going to make erratic cyclops ginormous and if you don't want to be that mean and be the extra turn guy you can just play whatever ginormous instants or sorceries that you enjoy and then watch your cyclops get ginormous and swing in for the kill also in any joyra deck it's a huge bonus if you can remove time counters twice three times a turn that will make your big spells come out even quicker and cause more mayhem all right next up we got crowl swarm four and a black creature insect warrior from guilds of ravnica flying pay two and discard a creature card return crowl swarm from your graveyard to your hand so honorable mention has to go to tormod the desecrator because his ability loves things that leave the graveyard however my first choice for the home for this janky little card is sir conrad the grim now remember kiddos is this the best card that could go in the deck I don't know. I don't know. It depends on what your idea of best is. But listen, you don't have any money to spend on cards. You can't order anything. So you're looking through your bulk pile and you find this. This will be able to fit. I promise you. Let me show you how. So Sir Conrad is a three black black legendary creature human knight originally printed in Throne of Eldraine, one of my favorite sets. Whenever another creature dies or a creature card is put into a graveyard from anywhere other than the battlefield or a creature card leaves your graveyard, Sir Conrad the Grim deals one damage to each opponent. Then you can pay two. Each player puts the top card of their library into their graveyard and he's a five four. So let me walk you through how this goes. It's pretty simple. You swing Kral Swarm at someone, it dies, each opponent loses a life. Then while it's in the graveyard, you pay three and discard a creature card. Then everyone loses a life again from Sir Conrad's ability. Then you return Kral Swarm from your graveyard to your hand. So it's leaving the graveyard. So people lose another life. So that's three damage done to opponents just by one interaction. Well, it's actually multiple interactions, but you get what I mean. For this last card, we're actually going back to Joyra of the Gitu. This card is overwhelming denial. It's two blue and a blue instant from Oath of the Gatewatch. It has surge blue blue you may cast this spell for its surge cost if you or a teammate has cast another spell this turn overwhelming denial can't be countered by spells or abilities counter target spell okay so maybe i just have i'm i'm a noob but i've just never seen this card before never once and i'll explain how it fits into joyra but honestly i think most spell slinger decks would benefit from having this card in the deck if someone if you're going off and someone casts a counter spell to ruin it all you can literally cast this for a reduced cost because you've already been casting 
casting spells that turn and then pow you can keep going with what i was saying earlier about joyra you're casting hopefully multiple spells for free on your turn and this is a great way to protect them so if you've already cascaded into an ulamog for example and someone's like mm, <laughs> no then you can overwhelmingly deny them <laughs> So sorry about that. Anyways, yeah, this card's pretty good in a Joyra deck, and some Spellslinger decks might really enjoy it too. Consider putting it in your decks. It's less than a dollar. Oh my god, we're already at the end. Wow, that's insane. Well, if you like this video, leave a like, subscribe, share it with your friends, and blow up the comments. Discuss all your favorite janky cards. Let me know what you think. I love being surprised by new jank and new misfits to include in my decks, so have at it, kiddos. Last but not least, consider joining my Patreon. The link is in the description. I got lots of really cool benefits for patrons, including a deck tech personalized, made for you by me once a year for top tier patrons. I'm really excited about it, so check it out.